Hey little sloths, it's me, Nikocado Avocado, and I was just on Tush.0. Oh. I was just on Tush.0, oh. you know, the famous show that's on Comedy Central. I was just, I just got back from the studio. Good morning, little sloths, good morning, oh my god. So it's almost 6.25, that's when they're picking me up. Here's me in my hotel room. I mean, I didn't get back, it's not like I'm returning to the restaurant. You think I live at a restaurant, but I really don't. Uh -huh. Now I'm brushing my teeth, you guys. Last night was crazy, I was throwing up. It's, I'm gonna tell you the whole story. I mean, I don't know if I'm being dramatic. I don't think I am. I think I was being extra precautious, but then I couldn't sleep and now, now I'm nervous. I had such bad sleep last night because I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna be on TV. <laughs> you guys, I'm turning this way because the mic's here. Hi, I was just, I was, I just can't believe what happened today. I can't believe what happened today. And I'm gonna tell you all about it, so let's just start with the day. Follow my Instagram at Nikocado Avocado, and if you do, I might just follow you back. So I don't even know if I'm allowed to film the facility, the facility, <laughs> facility. Look, I can't even talk. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to film the area because I don't know if it's like off limits for, you know, be, you know, there's like private things you can't look. Um, so I'm gonna have to ask. God, I'm so fucking nervous. I just, I, I wanna ask them for a shot of alcohol. I know they're not legally supposed to give their fucking guests alcohol right before they go to seven. Just a little bit. I mean, it just helps me so much not to nervous. You know, people in the orchestra did it all the time. I am gonna see if I can get half a shot of alcohol. And I don't know if I'm allowed to film the, the studio, but if I am, I'll see you there. If not, well, you know why. I'm not allowed. Okay, so this here is pink lemonade. By the way, I'm right in the entrance by the door. Oh, blowing my napkins everywhere. Um, right in the entrance by the door, so. That's why I have a mic, because the door goes open, close, open, close. There's a lot of people talking, but hopefully you can hear me. I got my hat. It's full of people, full of hungry people and whatever. We're just going to do our thing and chat. So I got my fork over here. I wish I could put this in the in the middle so you can hear me better. And last night, I ended up eating two cookies at three in the morning. Two cookies. I wish my teeth were really this white. Hey. Hi, I'm Nika Kato Avocado. Look at my white teeth. I wish. Um, No, two cookies. At like 3 a.m. because I couldn't sleep. Oh. And then I didn't brush my teeth, so now I have cookies in my teeth. What if I... Oh, yeah. Okay, I think this is better. Is this better? Okay, let's just... Before I even get into the story, I gotta have some of this french fry. Oh, my God. This here is the famous animal-style fry. And by famous, I mean they add the onions, some kind of special pink sauce, and you have to order this separately. It doesn't always come with your, your meal, so you have an option from one, two, or three, which are basically combo. so it's a burger and fries. Yes, everyone's staring, but I don't care. <laughs> so what you wanna do is ask, can I make my fries animal style? And so that's what they do. They add this yumminess, and I'm just gonna have a bite right now. All right, here's my outfit. Actually, you can't really see, so we're gonna go to the bathroom. They told me to come, basically come as you normally are. And so as you guys know, I'm usually a slob, so. Okay, just a black shirt, shorts. This is super, super casual. Got my rolls, everything is good to go. You guys know that you usually don't see from like here down. So yes, I got some nice love handles, but you usually don't see them, see them in the video. This was my view of Los Angeles. Look, I don't look that bad. <laughs> oh, shh. I have to in the morning. Okay. I know there's a mic in the way. I'm so sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Oh my god, it's so cheesy. Mmm. <coughs> By the way, I'm still shaking from earlier today. This is the behind the scenes. It is now what? Like, two, three? Uh, no, it's two. It's 2 p.m. exactly. I had to wake up at five this morning to get to the studio. I've had a long day. And I also had a long night, okay? So this is what happened. So I've been planning this Tosh.0 appearance for literally half a year. They wanted to bring me last year. I, well, get this, get this. They're gonna fly me out, shoot a couple things with me. And this was last year. And at that time I was like going through the deportation. Orlando and I were having issues, which by the way, by the time this video comes out, you guys were working things out off camera like adults. 
I kind of talked about it on the TV show, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. I talked about it in the TV show, like, oh, yeah, we're having marital issues, but we think we're going to get through it because that's what you do when you love someone. So, anyways, they're going to fly me out to do the um, to do the episode, like, six, six months ago. And I was like, oh, no, I'm having some personal issues, right? <sighs> oh, I should take my vitamins. I'm not allowed to film a set. I can't give you a tour. I can't film anyone. I can only show you this. Um, meeting room that's where I'm like filling out a bunch of paperwork for licensing and payment and all that kind of stuff but I'm here but I wish I could show you the green screen room is so cool all the lights are set is a buffet but um you'll see that is this still recording you guys this thing shut off during my um, Emirates video my Emirates fl flight video I didn't even realize okay this is the burger I got the double double so it's double the cheese and double the meat and is it double the veggies? Probably not. <laughs> Come on. America only cares about cheese and meat. Let's be real here. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. I also have ketchup. Here is my breakfast burrito. Now I got the veggie one to eat light because, you know, I'm eating on set today. So I don't want to get too full. But I need something to like calm my nerves and not faint. Oh, cheese, egg, and veggies. Mmm. But anyway, so I was just like, no, I'm going through stuff. And you know that saying in the industry, it is loud. Good thing I have my microphone. You know that saying where you never leave it while it's hot? Basically, if you're offered something and you turn them down, they won't necessarily be there five months down the road because there's always you're always replaceable in this world. I'm so replaceable. I eat and talk and cry. That's all I do. I can only think, well, yes. <laughs> I'm not throwing shade in this video. <laughs> okay. So I was just like, no, I'm sorry. And then I asked the producer straight up. I was like, by the way, I'm really curious about the nutrition facts. I really need to focus though. Speaking of my supplements, I really should take some ADD meds because I can't stop talking. Okay. And it blows makeup. Oh. Oh. Okay. okay. So again, you're going to close your eyes. Yep, perfect. And how's that feel? Like air. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to work around that eye like I told you. Couldn't be better. Awesome. Turn your head towards me a little. Nice. And a pro already. I asked the producer, I was just like, well, be honest with me. Be frank. If I say no, does that mean I'm losing my opportunity? And no, he said, he said this. We're only interested in you. I was like, oh. Okay, now it's some time to throw some shade at the other eating channels. Oh my god, I'm gonna get in trouble. Okay, well, someone in, that I was working with, I'm not gonna say who, I'm not gonna say names. There's hundreds of people that work for Tosh.0 oh and Comedy Central and all that stuff, so don't get mad at me. But they were just like, oh yeah, we're only interested in you. And I was just like, none of the others? And they're like, they're either too boring, they're nothing original. <laughs> First time getting, what do you call that, airbrush? Airbrushing. Airbrushing. Yep. Airbrushed. Mm -hmm. he, he said some of them moan and make really fake noises. Like, oh my god, now it's so obvious who I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, where you're just like, mm -mm, mm -mm. or like, oh my god, just looks so forced. No one's going to watch that on TV. And then, or they're too quiet. Or they're boring, or they don't have. A, so I was just, I don't know. The stars were aligned for me that they like my dramatic ass. Okay, I have something to offer. And so actually, I was reading, excuse me, over the script today, and I didn't find out until today that they want me to cry. So I finished the paperwork, and now I just wait for him to get here, and then we start. <laughs> At the end of it, in honor of all my breakdowns, and they're just like, we want you to cry. I'm like, I can't just cry. So let me tell you what happened. So anyways, they were only interested in me. 
which I think is so honorable. I mean, like, wow. I'm not saying this to brag. I know I'm being funny, throwing shade. But put yourself in my shoes. If you were doing videos where hundreds of other people do the same thing as you do, and a producer was only interested in you, that would make you feel really good. Like, I, for once in my life, I feel accomplished and proud of myself. Like, what do I do with my life? I gave up on my violin dreams. I gave up on where I want to live. I moved to a third world country. Like, I've, I haven't really felt like, wow, I accomplished something. You know, it feels really good for me. So, mm. Mm -mm -mm. don't you want to see up close? I got onion on mine, which I shouldn't do because it's sulfur, but oh well. Mmm. That is good. That is very good. So, the summer goes by. I start having my issues with Orlin, like, for real. He's like, we're separated. I fly to Thailand. And now we're in September, October. And they're like, hey, we're ready for you again. I'm like, oh my god, really? So, they flew me out here. And they didn't tell me until, like, a few days beforehand, like, the legit schedule. Which I thought was crazy, but I know why they do it. They don't want people to bail on them. They don't want to waste money. They probably have people, they reach out to people, they say yes, and then they say no, say no last minute. They don't want to hand out everyone's number. So I didn't have any agents or any, like, PAs. I didn't have a personal assistance. I didn't have any information. I didn't have the hotel they were putting me up in. I didn't have anything until the day of. Literally 20 hours before I got on the plane, they told, told me where I'm going. And I just thought that was crazy. I understand why, but I thought, I thought it was crazy. Mmm. I ate the paper, yay. <laughs> this lighting is so bad. We're turning the brightness down. Good thing I have my microphone. So, I had my plane right here, which was so scary. You guys know I hate plane rides. It was very bumpy. The craziest thing happened right before we landed. We're coming in over California, which, by the way, the West Coast, I mean, the the Central, like, we went over Arizona, Colorado. Who on their right mind lives out there? Oh, my gosh. What if you, like, fall down and need an ambulance? You're just, you might as well talk to Jesus right then and there because you're gone. <laughs> like, what? there's, there, I see little tiny houses in the middle of nowhere. Roads that go windy, windy up the mountain. There's no neighbors. You're, like, on your own. Like, an alien could abduct, ad abduct you and you would never know. No one would know. No one would come say. No one would hear a thing. I don't know how people do that. I mean, I don't like the city. I'm not the biggest fan of LA. I mean, I've been here a couple times now, and I would never see myself living here. Um, but that's a whole other thing. I just I like privacy, especially nowadays where I have haters and stalkers. I love privacy. Hmm. Oops. I ruined that napkin. So, as I was saying, coming in over the, once we got near the California border, because I saw on my airplane, little screen, they tell me where the borders are. Because I was watching the map out of curiosity, like, oh, what's this, what's this, what's this? And... All of a sudden, the plane does this motion I've never felt before, and I screamed. I was the only one that screamed, by the way. So, you know, planes bump like this up and down from turbulence. Like, they call them air pockets. But my Uber driver here, I was telling her this story, and she's like, I love to think of it as, like, uh, potholes in the road. And it's just, you know, to make yourself feel better. It's just a little pothole. Well, the plane went this way. I went like this, and then went like this. And I screamed. I went, ah! And I grabbed the, the arm, the arm, the arm by the chair. And the man who was sitting next to me happened to be resting there. So he's here and I'm like, ah, and I grabbed his arm. And I looked at him and I was like, oh, and he looked at me and was like, are you okay? It did that. It went like this. And I was like, oh my God, I've never felt that on a plane before. I'm like, shit. You guys know I have plane fear. 
And so maybe 30 seconds goes by, maybe not even, maybe 15 seconds. It's probably even less, probably like 10 seconds, which by the way, 10 to 12 seconds is a long time. One, two. Okay, so all of a sudden it does it again. And I'm just, my heart, I, you know that feeling where you can feel your, you below your stomach? Like me, my soul was in my groin at that moment. I was just like, come back up here, please. And I got lightheaded. And then the announcement, the captain came on and he was just like, oh, I'm sorry about that. There was a flight right ahead of us and turbulence. And by the way, I studied plane crashes like a crazy madman. There was a flight about a decade ago that was leaving um, LaGuardia. And you guys know the story. The plane crashed into the Brooklyn houses because it went too close to the plane in front of it. And that plane, all that gas and um, commotion being pushed out, the air blowing out, pushed the plane out of control and it spiraled down from wobbling, which is what we did. You would think people would learn from their mistakes, but you know, we're human beings and many people don't. Oh. So anyways, as I, I arrived yesterday, um, besides that, the plane ride was fine. <laughs> and then I have to text someone to text someone to text me. I don't know who's picking me up, and they finally tell me her, her name. And it's all secretive. Like, she's not holding up a sign that says, Nicocado Avocado. No. She's just tells me her description and where she's located and to meet her. And she's wearing a hat. So I find her, and we get into the vehicle, and she's like, I'm driving you to your location. <laughs> it's like a secret service. <gasps> I'm still so nervous. I can't believe I'm like re like going through everything in my mind. It's just crazy. And I'm, that's why I'm not eating much and I'm just blabbing. But you guys love when I talk, so it's whatever. <laughs> so we get to my hotel. This girl's really nice. She's not that old. She's like my age. And she's working for Tosh.0 oh as a PA, personal assistant. And she has her walkie-talkie earpiece in. But obviously, she's not close enough where she's receiving any information, like calls. But she's on her phone, like texting people that you know picked me up so anyways they take me to a hotel this was around well my time from the east coast man that truck is loud around my time from the east coast it was probably like 4 p.m 5 p.m but here minus three hours it's like middle of the afternoon so i'm like what do i do so she's like you can free to do whatever you want um we'll pick you up tomorrow set your alarm for 5 5 30 ish we'll be here by 6 20 6 25 and i was like 625 excuse me we start filming the tv show at 625 in the morning luckily for me since in my time that's 9 30 that's no big deal i slept you would think i slept like a baby well i didn't that's the thing hold on I'm still so nervous. I can't eat that well. I've never been through something like this. <sighs> so anyways, so I'm sitting in the hotel. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go hook up with anyone. I'm not going to see anyone. Even though I was kind of tempted. I was like, it'll be so fun to just like have a one night stand. <laughs> but no, I didn't. I could have. I'm allowed. I'm technically separated. There's no ring on it. You guys, I can't date anyone. I already told you the story. Sign up for a Tinder. The first message I get, aren't you a famous YouTuber? I've seen you. I'm like, oh God. Message another guy. Aren't you Nick Akato Avocado? And remember I showed you the screenshots in my, in my mukbang? <sighs> guys, I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> Not because it it doesn't matter if they recognize me. It's just like they could be putting little spy cameras. They could like leak my photos. It could, it's just. Like people in the Me Too movement are really like abusing it now. Say Me Too, Me Too, Me, me Too, Me Too, Me Too, Me Too. And uh, none, none of it's verifiable. A lot of it's a lie because they just, they want their moment in the spotlight and it ruins people's lives. You guys know that, right? I'm really, I'm definitely in the middle with that whole Me Too thing. Well, that's a whole, a whole different story. But you know what I mean? There's no way to prove what happened 25 years ago. And 
why should someone's career end because someone said it? That person could be lying. People lie for so many different reasons. I've had the stupidest stuff be lied about me. So they get attention or gain or followers or likes or... It's just people... You guys, that's how people are. And now, just last month, the girl who's fr friends with Rose McGowan, the one who, cl who claimed that um, Harvey Weinstein, you know, touched her and stuff, well, now a guy is coming forward that she touched him when he was 18. So it's just like, you wouldn't have known that if the guy didn't... Cause it's just like, you don't ever know the whole story. I'm <laughs> checking that this is still recording. So, anyways... Um, what was I saying? I forget. It's talking about. Oh yeah, what do I want to do last night in the hotel? I did nothing. But panic. So this is what happened. So 5 p.m. rolls around, 6 p.m. rolls around. I'm like, oh god, I haven't eaten since I left Pennsylvania, which was nine hours ago. All I had was some chicken. I didn't feel that hungry. But I also did feel a little hungry. So I was like, let me have the chicken. So what I did that morning, I took the chicken out of the freezer the night beforehand. I thawed it out. And then I cooked it right away. So when I woke up, it was still like slightly frozen, but still very cold. So I cooked it. When I woke up, I ate two chicken breasts in the morning. Two whole I stuffed it in. And then I had one chicken breast cut up to the little dice pieces, sauteed it with some flavors. <clears throat> put it in a Ziploc baggie, sealed airtight, and brought it with me on the plane. I was gonna eat it on the plane, okay? But I forgot. And then once, I, well, no, the first time I wasn't hungry, obviously. It was right after eating two whole chicken breasts. I had a layover in Chicago, and then I had the other flight while well, I forgot on that flight. And then with all the, the rigmarole of finding someone to take me to, ho to the hotel and whatever, I forgot about it, and plus I wasn't that hungry. So I was just like, oh, let me eat this chicken, chicken breast. So I'm eating like five or six chunks. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I didn't warm it up or anything. There's no microwave in the hotel. I'm thinking like, is this okay to eat? And then I start Googling like, can you eat a uh, chicken that was left out for, you know, 10 hours, five hours? I mean, I don't know. But, you know, guys know I went like 10, 10 years not eating meat. I didn't really ever cook in my life because, you know, I'm so young. So minus 10 years from now, 12 years old, what, 15 years old. I mean, I'm not cooking then. So I really didn't know. Everything on Google told me, after two hours, you are dangerous levels of food poisoning. Dangerous, dangerously, dangerously high <laughs> risk for food poisoning. The bacteria multiplies like crazy. You can get your stomach pumped to the hospital. And you guys know me, I'm a hy hypochondriac. I was like, <gasps> I can't have the shits for Tosh.0 tomorrow. I can't be throwing up. I'm already nervous enough. What if I get the actual flu where my whole body aches and I can't think and I have the sweats? I'm just like, oh my God. If I get food poisoning the day before I go on TV, what am I going to do? I was freaking out. And you know, Google will tell you anything, but you have to take it with a grain of salt. But I didn't realize that. So what I did was read everything I could and everyone's saying it's really, 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 really dangerous. So what I did was like, well, fuck, I gotta throw this chicken up. I have to. I can't have the shit. So I can't have diarrhea on Touch Point Out tomorrow. <sighs> so for the first time in my life, there's been a few other times where I'm like sick. I mean, I, I'm trying to like set myself up so people think like, oh, that's what you do. Obviously, you guys know I don't do that because if I did throw out my food, you guys, I don't have bulimia. All right. I wouldn't have gained fucking 150 pounds if I had bulimia. Okay. I would have lost all my hair. My hair's still nice and thick and good. I don't do that. I enjoy food too much to eat. I don't have any eating disorder or anything. But I was so scared that I was going to get the shits on Tosh.0. Oh. So I went to the bathroom. I have to be quiet because people are listening. I went to the bathroom and I put my finger into my throat and I threw up. And I started crying because I was like, oh my God. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm like, wee. And it, I, hate, I hate doing that. It grosses me out. The smell. Oh, let's just. Yeah. So I did that and not that much came out. You know, like I probably ate half of the breast. There was just a few little striggle straggles that came out. So I'm like, great. What am I going to do? So I'm laying on the bed and then I'm like, let me call my mom because she's a nurse. So I call my mom and I tell her the whole story. and She's like, Nicholas, stop being dramatic. I'm like, mom, I'm not. Yes, you are. 
And I was like, everything I read says chicken after two hours. Well, she's like, that's raw chicken. If you have raw, uncooked chicken that sits there for two, five, two, three, four, five hours, that's when it's a little risky. But you cooked it. You cooked it. And I was like, yeah, well, I didn't know. She's like, Nick, I can't tell you how many times where I have chicken, I make a sandwich out of it, I put it in the fridge, whatever, and then I take it to work and I eat it nine hours later on my break and I don't heat it up and I still eat it and I'm fine. Just the other weekend, your, your father and I went out to eat and we had cheeseburgers and we accidentally left them on the counter. And the next day we ate them and we didn't heat them up. We had them at room temperature. Now they're probably going to be pissed because that's kind of gross. <laughs> they're like, we're fine. She's like, Nick, that is worst case, worst case, worst case scenario. Does It's not going to happen to you. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I got, you guys, I stress myself out so much. I get so worried. So I was swollen like a balloon, not only from the airplane, but also from the stress of worrying about getting food poisoning. So my stomach was out to here, even though I only had two chicken breasts that whole day. My face was like, I could feel like water in my fingers. Like the water retention, the water weight, you guys, was crazy. Crazy water. Like I need my water weight shirt for last night. Like I was walking, I could feel my thighs rubbing together in places that they never rubbed before. I'm like, oh my God, I gained 50 pounds overnight. And it's just when your stress hormones get released and all this water comes out and I swell. I'm literally a puff. No, it's so funny. When I lived with Orlin and his mother, when I would get angry at stuff, you know, I didn't, we, we can't really speak that well because she didn't speak English very well. I don't speak any Spanish. So it's broken English, broken Spanish, whatever. So she would tell Orlin, who would tell me, she said she noticed that if you were ever flustered about something, that you would blow up like a puffer fish. She said she, she could see in your face and your arms, you would swell. And that's exactly what I do. If I'm anxious, if I'm stressed, if I'm nervous, if I'm angry, I swell. So that water weight is water weight, okay? Because it's all gone. A lot of, uh, look, look, it's all gone. My fingers yesterday look like balloons. Oh my God, there's only five minutes left. I'm gonna have to divide this into two parts. Shoot. I'm gonna have to, I haven't even gotten to the studio stories yet. We're gonna divide this into two parts. I'm gonna walk over to Jollibee. Is this still recording? How long? It hasn't been that long. Oh my God. Um. So let's just continue with the hotel story. I am going crazy. I'm not feeling happy. Whatever. Um. Okay. So I ended up falling asleep around eight. 30 p.m., which would have been like 11.30 midnight my time. So that was fine. I went to sleep. I woke up at 2 in the morning with ravenous hunger. Since I threw up the little chicken I had, I had nothing left in me. Ravenous, ravenous hunger. So I had a binge on two cookies that the, the hotel gave me. I was like, a thank you. They gave me two homemade walnut cookies. They were delicious. I ate two of them, but then I felt like shit again. <laughs> From two, two cookies right before bed. And then I couldn't fall asleep right away because I got a sugar rush. I was just all over the place last night. And I... And I had to wake up at 5 a.m. Well, 5.30, but I ended up waking up naturally. Yeah, I didn't sleep. You know when, like, you have a plane ride the next morning? You don't sleep well that right. You know what they, they say ducks? Ducks sleep with half their brain working. They do it for to watch out for predators. So ducks don't fully sleep that much. They only turn on half their brain so they can keep an eye out for predators. That's how I was last night. My brain was not fully shut off. So, luckily, I didn't have big bags or anything for today's... Um, for filming, I was just like, here we go. Let's go to the studio. I was so nervous and excited. So that was my fiasco in the middle of the night. So anyways, I wake up this morning. I don't look as big. It looks like I lost 10 pounds from sleeping. I'm like, yay, the water weight's going away. So I take a shower. I pack my stuff. I only have one bag. My bag that I brought is literally right here. Excuse me, it's my book bag. I'm wearing what I wore on set. Now, they gave me uh, costume stuff to wear, which you'll find out. But, um... It was very laid back and stuff, so but I was still nervous as heck. So 6.20 ro rolls around, and the personal assistant picks me up in the hotel. She checks me out. My God, there's only a minute left. I feel so bad. basically done my french fries those were good mm. 
Well, I will see you at Bee for part two. You guys are going to be so mad. I'm so sorry. I have to change my battery, my card. It's been a, so this is... Oh my god, I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, it's not my fault. Trust me, I didn't play. I would have. I would have sat here. I still. Ha you know me. I just start talking and talking. <sighs> well, for the next thir ten seconds, I want to thank you for your time. Click the link at the top of the description box to go to part two to watch the rest. I love you guys. Subscribe. I'm here every single day, and catch me on Comedy Central. Bye.